the NFL rigged. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert Sports Show. I'm your host, Robert. NFL Week 10. Whew. Um, <laughs> I'm doing all right on my picks. I'm about, looks like, 23 games over 500 on my win-loss picks. And I'm about 20-some games under 500 on against the spread and over-under year to date. So, not... Hey, those two suck. The win-loss is great. I'm, I'm fine with that. 77-54 overall picks. Not bad. Alright, we have some games here. Some interesting games and some just really shit games here. Um, Thursday night, we have Cleveland Browns 0-9 versus the Baltimore Ravens 4-4. Four four. The Ravens, the leader of the AFC North. In Week 2, Baltimore beat Cleveland 25-20 in Cleveland. Um, line on this game is Baltimore minus 10. An over under 45. Uh, I'm getting Baltimore to win. I think that Cleveland will cover the 10 based on week two. And then I'm taking over on the 45. Next, we have the uh, AFC wildcard team currently the Kansas City Chiefs, 6 and 2, versus the yeah, defending NFC champions, the Carolina Panthers, at 3 and 5. With these uh, referees this year, Cam's not getting called. I mean, he's getting. Not getting called against penalties against him. When, like I've said before, Tom, Br Tom Brady had breathed on him and it's fucking roughing the passer penalty. Um, I got Kansas City going on the road, winning. Um, actually, the line of this game is Carolina by three at home. I'll get Kansas City in the three points, so Kansas City plus three. With a under on the 44 points, Kansas City victory on the road. Next, we have the uh, AFC South leading 5-3 Houston Texans versus Jacksonville Jaguars 2-6. One of the teams that I picked to make a wild card run in the AFC. Holy shit, was I wrong. Houston favored by 1.5 on the road. I got them winning, covering, and under on the 42.5. Next, we have the defending Super Bowl champions. And currently an AFC wildcard team, the Denver Broncos at 6-3. Going into New Orleans in the Superdome, 4-4 four, four four New Orleans Saints. New Orleans favored by 1.5 at home. I'm giving a 1.5 to Denver. Denver plus 1.5. Winning, covering, and under four, on the 49. Just, just a shit game here. We have two teams going in the same direction that's down. We have the 3-5 Los Angeles Rams. Versus the three and six New York New York Jets. Wow. Jets favored by two points at home. Wow. So Jared Goff, number one draft pick, not playing. Okay. We trade a bunch of picks to get to the number one pick to take Jared Goff. But according to what rumors are, Jeff Fisher didn't want Jared Goff. Uh. Um. Whatever his name is. Les Snead and uh, whatever the GM's name is. They picked him. But yet, yeah, Jeff Fisher's the coach. Huh. Why wouldn't you if you're L.A. take a Southern California kid? Play the fucking number one draft pick. Goddamn, your season's over. You're not going anywhere. The rumor is, we'll play your... According to Jeff Fisher, we'll play Jared Goff when he's ready. Yeah, when you're eliminated from the playoffs, he's all of a sudden going to be ready. Number one, your offensive line sucks. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe Fisher should come out and say, you know what? The old line sucks. We don't want to get this poor kid killed. So we're going to wait till we have an offensive line before we start this guy. Whatever. Jets, good lord, what the hell's going on with them? Let's see, last year, Geno Smith gets punched in the face, broken nose by a teammate. And then they bring Ryan Fitzpatrick in. Had a pretty good season last year. They go 10-6 to miss the playoffs. They don't sign Ryan Fitzpatrick right away. So you kind of tell Fitzpatrick, we don't want you, but we want something better. Oh wait, there's nothing better. I guess we'll take you back. So he's already behind the eight ball we're getting ready for the season. He has a shitty season so far. So they put Gina Smith back in. He tears a fucking ACL. So you put Fitzpatrick back in. He's fucking hurt. Wow, the Jets are just just a fucking mess, and so are the Rams. And the Jets win, cover under under forty. AFC South, or NFC South, leading the Atlanta Falcons six and three versus the Philadelphia Eagles four and four. 
Philadelphia is last in the NFC East. They've gone one and four in the last five games to a great start. Um, the line is even uh, with an over under of 15 and a half. So I'm taking Philadelphia to win and uh, over on the 15 and a half. Uh, next we have the Chicago Bears two and six versus Tampa Bay Buccaneers three and five. Who gives a fuck? Um, I guess Jameis. And this game is going to be a shitty game. We thought Jameis Winston was more than he is. He's not. Or there's nothing around him. Tampa Bay favorite one and a half at home. They win. They cover under under 49. Green Bay Packers four and four versus Tennessee Titans four and five. Yeah. Green Bay. What the hell happened, Aaron Rodgers? I mean, really? You used to be like really good at home. You've had five losses in the last 13 home games. I mean, you were like 49 and nine or 46 and nine or some point in his career. And then lately, he's like eight and five in the last 13 or something, or eight and five in the last, yeah, whatever. I don't know. Green Bay is just, yeah, I don't think they're coached properly. I think McCarthy needs needs a change. I think Aaron Rodgers needs a different scheme. I, I guess I don't know. Four and four Green Bay Packers, uh, pair by two and a half on the road. Tennessee Brock Osweiler. Sorry, Tennessee, Mike, Marcus Mar Mariota. I mean, he's all right. He needs, I don't know what they need. I mean, defense, something they need um, to make that team better. Green Bay favored by two and a half on the road. I get them winning and covering. Next, we have, now this actually should be a pretty good game. This is a possible playoff matchup. We have the NFC North leading Minnesota Vikings at five and three. Losers are three straight, unfortunately. Versus, uh, sorry, NFC wildcard leading Washington Redskins at 4 3 and 1. Uh, Washington favored by 3.5 at home. Really, I think highly in Minnesota. I think they proved a point they can win without Peterson, win without Bridgewater. Bradford's doing just good enough to get them to win. They got one of the top defenses in the NFL. I'm giving them the 3.5, so Minnesota plus 3.5. They covered that and taking under 41.5 for the Minnesota victory. Next, we have the 4-4 four four Miami Dolphins versus San Diego Chargers at 4-5. San Diego by 3.5 at home. Win, cover, over on the 49. Uh, so an, an NFC West matchup, we have San Francisco 49ers at 1-7 versus the Arizona Cardinals 3-4-1. Week 5, Arizona beat the Niners 33-21. Arizona in favor by 13. I have same frame covering the 13 based on that Week 5 numbers and taking over on the 48. Next, we have the surprise best team in the NFC, 7-1 NFC East leading Dallas Cowboys versus the Pittsburgh Steelers at 4-4. Four four. Some say this is a possible Super Bowl matchup. Uh, Pittsburgh favored by 2.5 at home. I'm giving that 2.5 to Dallas, so Dallas plus 2.5 victory and over on the 50 points. On Sunday night, we have the NFC West leading Seattle Seahawks 5-2-1. Versus AFC East leader, New England Patriots, 7-1. Another possible NFL 50, or yeah, Super Bowl 51 preview. So these two games here, Dallas, Pittsburgh, Seattle, New England. One of these two teams, one of these, out of each game, I bet, will end up in the Super Bowl. Either Pittsburgh, New England for the AFC, or Seattle, Dallas for the NFC. New England by 7.5 at home with the line. I got New England winning, covering the 7.5 over on the 48.5. On Monday Night Football, we have the Cincinnati Bengals 3 4 and 1 versus the New York Football Giants at 5 and 3 and leaders of the NFC wild card. And we have the Giants favored by 2.5 at home. And don't overlook the Giants and Eli Manning, two time Super Bowl winners here, and they beat the New England Patriots both times. Just saying, I mean, there's a possibility. Dallas, Seattle, New York Giants. Who exactly do you think is going to come out of Minnesota? That could be your final four for the NFC. I'd be fighting any of that matchups. Chances are it's going to be New England in the AFC. Um, I have Giants favored by two and a half at home on Monday night. I had them winning. I had them covering. I'm taking over on the 47. 
can we get any worse officiating than we've had for Green for uh, Seattle on Monday night? <laughs> That's kind of why I think the the league might be rigged. I think these referees are betting on football and they're blowing calls for the game they're at because they're going to want a certain team to win. Why else would you blow it for Pitt, for Buffalo and hand the game to Seattle? Because everybody want everybody's predicting Seattle is one of the NFC Super Bowl possibilities. I don't know. I could be completely wrong with that, or I could be dead right. I don't know. Something's got to be done with the officiating. Something's got to be done with some of these shitty Thursday night games. Like I said before, everybody gets two bye weeks. Your first two games of the season on Thursday night, the first one, Super Bowl matchup at the home of the winning Super Bowl team this year, Carolina at Denver. Week two, you do Carolina home versus Denver, based on last year's Super Bowl. And then you have week two, as some two teams by week, they start week three, Thursday night, and then you have the double bye weeks, and everybody gets their Thursday night game on the bye week, off the bye week. And then at the same point, you have a flexible schedule. You set your Thursday night, your Monday night games. The first four you set, per period, from game from week five through week 18, because two bye weeks to be 18 weeks, from week five to week 18, you move your schedule, you have kind of a floating schedule. You do it like three weeks in advance, so for fans, for sponsors, and etc. And then you set your Thursday night, your Monday night. That way you have your best matchup going into that week on Thursday, Monday, maybe Sunday night. Your ratings go back up. So ratings are down all across the board because of the NFL itself. The NFL Network. You don't have to watch a game. You, they show you the highlights. NFL Radio on XM Satellite Radio. Holy shit. It cuts into the greatest parts of each game. So you can be driving around running errands on Sunday and not miss stuff. No one sits down to watch a three-hour football game that much anymore. That's why all the results are down 10%. Thanks for watching our sports show and have a great night.